As promised, woo! <laughs> the Kokomo <laughs> Humane Society is in the house. Welcome. I'm sorry. Welcome. Thank you very much for inviting me on your very first week here. I know. It's this pretty is so exciting. exciting. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, all kinds of exciting things going on. Kokomo Humane Society. We are really, really happy. First of all, just to let you know what the Kokomo Humane Society is, we mm -hmm. are um, basically a safe haven for lost or unwanted animals. Mm -hmm. We're not a permanent residence. Sure. We want people to come in and get these animals into homes. And give them a forever and, homes. Right. So um, that's what we do. We get about 4,000 animals a year. Wow. Yeah, it's between 80 and 90 a week, so we get really? a lot of animals. This time of year, not so many. Summertime, quite a few, because we have all the kittens and puppies that are being born. Oh, okay. So, uh, But we've been working really hard on reducing our euthanasia rates, mm -hmm. raising our adoption rates, getting animals out into other communities. Mm -hmm. Like we, ha we have an arrangement with a, a Fort Wayne shelter. Mm -hmm with a Lafayette shelter, uh, Indianapolis, and several rescues, about 60 rescues, uh -huh. to get animals moved into different demographics or into different areas where people may be more interested in adopting them. Mm -hmm. Not that, that Kokomo isn't the perfect community for an animal, but maybe not for this animal. Maybe it'll do better in sure. Lafayette or Fort Wayne. Sure. So, uh, so we've been really excited. We have reduced our euthanasia rates into 2012 by 14%. Wow, that's incredible. It is. It, Kudos. It's really good. We have some very good staff mm -hmm. members who are working on this and getting this done. So, so this is making us really, really happy. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is that we have a, um, an arrangement with Purdue University. Mm -hmm. Well, they, will, they have a mobile spay, spay neuter unit. Uh -huh. And they bring it to us once every month about and spay and neuter as many animals as they can in a day. Sure. And that's usually about 20. Wow. And um, so we're That seems like a lot. Is that an <laughs> average number or For a high volume spay neuter? No. It's it's probably as it should be. In mm -hmm. fact, it probably could be even more if it were really? a bigger clinic kind of thing. But wow. it's just they just have a couple of vets on board and and uh, neutering doesn't take very long, and, and spaying is a little more complicated. So and then they just kind of take them back to their cages so that they can recoup? And right. We have actually a, a recovery room. We mm -hmm. turn our education room into a recovery room. We have volunteers mm -hmm. who uh, monitor the animals. They take their temperatures. They, you know, see if they're able sure. to move around, things like that. And, and once they're able to walk around, then we'll put them back in their, in wow. their runs and cages. So uh, it's a great, it's been a great thing for us because it's, it's not necessarily free, but it's very low cost for us. Mm -hmm. So we're able to reduce adoption fees and which even helps gets the, more animals sure. in their homes. And so now, just a little little plug here, we are seeing stars. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have because of you know the Golden Globes and the Oscars and the nominations sure. and everything. All our animals, of course, are stars, but our cats especially um, are a little harder to move. So we've been able to reduce adoption fees. Uh, normally, it's a, a hundred and fifteen for an adult cat. Mm -hmm. They're fifty dollars. Um, That's a significant drop. It is a significant drop. Mm -hmm. And then any animal that comes to us already spayed or neutered is always twenty dollars. The cats are always twenty dollars mm -hmm. anyway. So does that happen a lot? Or yeah, we, we get a lot of strays that maybe already spayed and neutered that people um, haven't looked for, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Or just uh, get lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, and sometimes people will bring their animals mm -hmm. to us, and they've already been spayed. So mm -hmm. so that's a good opportunity for us to get them into homes quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and at a much lower fee, mm -hmm. and we also have an adoption uh, satellite at Petco, and so oh, wow. for just for cats, and we also do a once a month uh, adoption. We take dogs over there and, and sure. do adoption. Sure. So, so we're really we're working to try and get the animals into homes because that's where they belong. They mm -hmm. do not belong in an animal shelter, you but, know, as much as we like them. Right. <laughs> and let's touch on that a little bit because not only is it just one of those places where you guys can say, okay, come pick out your pet. You guys actually make room for new adoptive families to come in and get used to the pet. You can you kind of even encourage to bring your entire family right. out and say, okay, let's let's introduce you guys slowly. Right. Especially with children. Right. And that's we need that. And there's some animals that we don't either they've come to us as strays and we're just not sure about their background mm -hmm. or we're pretty sure they're not going to be happy with kids. Sure. And so, you know, we won't even talk to people about I mean right. we'll, we'll explain to them why because gee, this cute little chihuahua is so nice, and you know, but every time he sees a kid, his lips curl back, and you sure, know, so, sure. So, so we want to make sure that that it is going to be a good match. Mm -hmm. We have outdoor um, meeting areas as well. Mm -hmm. People can throw a ball for the for the dog, and right. And, and it's not them. a very small area. I mean, no. there's yeah, it's, three or four different. Yeah. Different, pens. We call them the X pens, yeah. Right, and there's plenty of room to run. There's plenty <laughs> of room to even in the winter time. There's still room out there right. to go play, and there's a big yard. So right, and obviously you. Tim, you've been to the shelter. Yes. You know we don't have a whole lot of room, but we, you know, we do try to make as much as much room for people who want to meet an animal as possible. Sure. And so, uh, right now, we we've got like a litter of kittens in our education mm -hmm. room that are that are 
being, we're fostering them in there so that they can, when they're old enough to be put up for adoption, we can get them up. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of hard for us to meet dogs and cats inside. We got plenty of room outside. So <laughs> yes. even, even when it's 14 below, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And genuinely, it's, an, it's a beautiful facility that you guys have. Mm -hmm. um, very well organized, very clean. People are very knowledgeable. They're there to answer your questions that you might have. You know, maybe you don't know exactly what kind of pet that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. You guys are there all, every step of the way to say, okay, look, here's, let's, let, let's talk about room. How much room do you have? We have a person at the shelter who swear I, it, she's the adopter whisperer. I mean, pe <laughs> people walk in the door and she'll go, I have the dog for you. <laughs> and so that, that's really great. She did this with my son. He had, he had come in, he wanted to adopt a dog with lots of hair and he's mm -hmm. 27 years old and was, you know, with guys and, you know, sure. we knew he really wouldn't want to brush the dog with lots of hair. And so she said, no, you don't want that dog. You want this dog. And he did adopt that dog. And, uh, She's wonderful. She's perfect for him. He's perfect Incredible. for her. So, uh, so you know, we, we have this staff member who, I, I don't know, she's not Karnak, but she's pretty darn close. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're, we're happy with that. But it's even more than that. You guys actually do take the time to say, don't rush into this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a big deal to adopt a pet. It's adding a, fa a member to your family. Right. And so, you know, and, and also when people come and say, well, I want to keep my dog outside all the time, we say, well, would you keep a member of your family out in a mm -hmm. pen? Because we want to, we, dogs really, they want to be with the family. They're mm -hmm. pack animals. And because they're pack animals, they want to be with their pack, which is you. Right. And so. Their new adoptive family. Right. So if you put them outside, leave them alone, they're going to start having, get, getting bad habits. Mm -hmm. They're going to start chewing on things. They're going to start, you know. As does everyone. As I would chew on a wall if I were <laughs> also going by myself I all the time, too. <laughs> So, uh, you know, we we really want, we encourage people to adopt the pets as family members, not as, you know, sit in the pen out in the backyard or, sure. or be an outdoor cat all the time. Just for the sake time. of having a Right. A yeah, pet. just getting a dog is not uh, not necessarily the right. way we appreciate people doing it. So we're, we're a little picky mm -hmm. as far as adoptions go, but we also want our adopters to be picky as well. Mm -hmm. We want them to, to get to know the animal, um, have a good time with mm -hmm. them. See how, it, and we even allow them to bring in their own animals if they already have a dog mm -hmm. or cat. Well, a cat, maybe not so much because cats sure. don't like change. But, um, but to bring in a dog and see if they get together right. and, and get along on kind of neutral territory. Yeah, it still goes back to that. It's a big deal. You're yeah. adding that family member. Right. You're changing the lifestyle. You're 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 mm -hmm. definitely changing your routine of the day. Right, and it is a commitment, and that's that's something we also try to drive home that it is a commitment that you are adopting this animal maybe for 10, 15, 20 years, mm -hmm. and so. When you make that commitment, make it wholeheartedly and make it with, with as much forethought and education as you possibly can. Right, because it, it truly is a big deal. I mean, yeah. it, they are going to be your new family member. That's right, exactly. So, we, you know, we, we really work hard with that. Mm -hmm. And we ask people to fill out an adoption application. And right. They, they get a little, little uh, I don't know, they'll laugh and say, well, gee, if I had to adopt a kid, would I have to fill out this much? But, you know, we want to know who you are. We mm -hmm. want to know how many animals you have. Sure. If you've had five animals in the last five years and one disappeared, one got hit by a car, one got poisoned by the neighbors, one, you know, we don't know where it went, then we're going to maybe suggest a potted palm or something that's a little, you know, a <laughs> little uh, less intensive. Maybe a trip to Hobby Lobby <laughs> might be best <laughs> right, for you. Right, yeah. so, Take up knitting. <laughs> uh, you, you just mentioned lost. Tell mm -hmm. me about lost pets and because I know you want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, uh, we get a lot of stray animals. Uh -huh. And what we really want to encourage people to do is if you lose your pet, come to the animal shelter mm -hmm. and see if your pet is there. Sure. Now you can call us, but we you may give us a description and tell us it's a chow chow and we may look at it and say it's a husky mix. Sure. And so it's really, really important for people to come down to the shelter, look at our stray mm -hmm. animals, see if their animal is there, fill out a lost report so that we have something on paper. Mm -hmm. If you find a pet, you don't necessarily need to bring it to the shelter, but again, give us a description, mm -hmm. s take a picture and email it to us, um, bring it to us and we'll scan it for a microchip. Sure. So any of those things can help us to find a home, find the right home for that pet. Mm -hmm. We have so many people who say, well, I found this cute little dog and I think I'm going to keep it. Oh. But it may be somebody's beloved pet. And right. so we, wanna, we want people to understand that if you find a pet or if you lose a pet, the best thing to do is come into the shelter Take a look, you know, or and, and if you're bringing a, a lost dog in, mm -hmm. check and see if it's got ID that you may not be able to see. Sure. So uh, we do encourage people who have pets to put tags on them mm -hmm. as well as a microchip because any person who finds an animal just, you know, off the sure, street sure. is not going to have a microchip sure. scanner. With that, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> 